right, let's take a look at Division I, Region Two. Those are the matchups. And the one we're going to be talking about right there, the 7-2 matchup, the Shoreman of Avon Lake on the road to take on Toledo Whitmer, the number three ranked Division I team in the state. Let's head out live to Shoreman Country and Avon Lake High School. And their longtime head football coach, Dave DeLugas, joins us here in studio. Coach, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes here this afternoon as you guys get ready for Whitmer this week. Well, I'm glad to be talking to you in week 11, no <laughs> doubt about that. Congratulations on, on win number 200. This is actually the one that also got you put into the playoffs as well. The first time that you guys make the playoffs as a Division I team, you guys are a long-time Division II playoff participant. Any kind of changes besides the teams, obviously, that you go up against as you get ready for your first game in Division I? Well, as far as preparation goes, there's no changes whatsoever. Football is football. Uh, but uh, the issue that you always have at Division One, of course, is uh, depth issues. Uh, one of the things that happens, of course, as you get nicked up, the bigger schools in Division One can replace a 260-pound tackle with another 260-pound tackle. Uh, with us being one of the smaller schools in Division One, actually the smallest school in Division One, we get a couple people nicked up and our depth just doesn't match up sometimes. Can you talk about it, it, some of the changes uh, that you've made, some of the adjustments that you've made, especially uh, on the offensive side of the football in particular? Uh, it, it seems to me, you know, in all the games that I've seen, and you know I've known you for quite a while, uh, that there are some new wrinkles in, in this offense, which has really made a lot of teams who are scouting you and, and watching tape, they're going to have to think twice about a couple of different things going in. Well, what we try to do is tailor our offense. We still have our base offense, but then try to tailor it to uh, uh, the type of talent that we have. We have a quarterback who throws the ball pretty well. We've got uh, a number of receivers that can catch the ball and get open and run in the open field. So that really just helps our running game also because uh, they can't really sit and load the box because they've got a couple of receivers and a quarterback who can throw the ball uh, sitting back there waiting for them. How, what's the situation with Colin Lucas? Is he going to be healthy going into this week's game? Uh, Colin Lucas is done for the season. Uh, he's got a severe high ankle sprain. It's not going to require any surgery or anything. But on the other hand, uh, uh, he will not be ready to go until about the middle of December. Wow. So that's a, you know, a big blow to us, but it's one that we have to overcome. Uh, he's an all-state caliber player uh, on both sides of the football, our fullback in an I formation, an inside linebacker, and our 3-4 front. Uh, but our kids have adjusted, and uh, they understand that uh, you know, Toledo Whitmer is not going to uh, feel sorry for us <laughs> because we lost Colin Lucas. We have to go out there and play football. So many guys on both sides of the ball making plays. Uh, talk a little bit about Jimmy Hessel and, and the season that he's had uh, on both sides of the football for you because he's really become a special player in your program. Well, we've had some really good wide receivers here at Avon Lake High School. Uh, Trey Strauss, who played at uh, uh, Iowa, and uh, Andrew Means, who played at the University of Indiana. And he matches up with, uh, with those guys. Now, he might not be quite as uh, big a physical specimen. He's about 6'2", 170 pounds. But what he does bring to the table is uh, he has uh, that, uh, that shake and shimmy after he catches the ball. And he's playing two ways for us. He leads our team with about uh, 54 catches. He scored 11 touchdowns for us. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, he also has nine interceptions. And he has almost 1,000 yards in returns, both kickoff and punt returns. So he's really a key to, to what's happening here at Avon Lake High School this year. Talk a little bit about your matchup uh, on Saturday night against uh, Toledo Whitmer. And, and you know how big they are defensively up front. But then you're also dealing with a real multi-dimensional quarterback in Nick Holley. He's a guy that's run for 300 yards in a game. He's thrown for 300 yards in a game. And how much pressure and, and how tough is it to get ready for a kid like that that means so much to an offense? Well, the thing that impresses everybody about Toledo Whitmer is the number of points that they've scored on some very good quality opponents. But as I'm watching the film, the thing that really stands out to me is their defense. Uh, I think their defense has only given up about 75, 80 points throughout the whole season. And uh, as you mentioned, they have some big guys up front. 
Uh, but they also, their linebackers are real good. They play good team, disciplined defense. You don't get them out of position very often. And uh, they run to the football and pursue very well. On the offensive side of the ball, uh, they have a guy, I, I mean, you know, there's only one type, or there's only one Braxton Miller, but on the <laughs> other hand, this is the type of quarterback that he is. He would rather be uh, running the football on the read option any day uh, than maybe passing the football, but he's certainly adept at both. But to what sets everything up is the running of the quarterback that uh, makes you go one-on-one -on -one with their receivers because you can't empty the box when they go with their spread. Well, Coach, we appreciate you taking a couple minutes. I know it's been a rough week with the power outages and preparing uh, for the first playoff game of the year, but we appreciate you taking a couple minutes here this afternoon and talk some Shoreman football, and, and good luck on Saturday night. Well, it's my pleasure. I really enjoy your show. You know, now that I'm uh, retired and all I have to do is come in for practice, I watch your show every Friday, so I think you guys do a great job. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. There's head coach Dave DeLuga says the Shoremen get ready to take on the number three ranked Division One team in the state, Toledo Whitmer, and that's coming up on Saturday night. This is a 57-yard field goal attempt to tie the ball game with five seconds to go. Good snap. And it's on its way, and it is going to be short, and the ball game is over. The Coleraine Cardinals have come to St. Xavier and defeated the Bombers by the final score of 31 to 28. We walked you back to week number three. Coleraine came out on top, which actually that was the lowest margin of victory the Cards had faced all year, but once again, ah, oh, death taxes and Cole Rain and X in the playoffs. That's what's happening at Cardinal Stadium tomorrow night, and you'll get to see the replay at 10 o'clock here on Sports Time Ohio. And from that, we welcome in who better than the Duke himself. Nick Dudukovich from the Cincinnati Inquirer joins us on the Rebel Wireless Hotline. Hello, Duke. How are you? I'm doing well. My demons are in the playoffs for the first time in 23 years. Mike, I'm doing well. You're good to go. And that's a game people will see live here on Sports Time Ohio coming up tonight at 730. Let's talk about X and Cole Rain. X has Cole Rain's number, certainly in the playoffs. They won four of the five meetings, but lost in the regular season. The two teams match up again. Last year, it was a second round matchup when X beat Cole Rain. Boy, you're talking about a tight game. It was a three point game the first time around. I'm guessing everyone expects another close one here this weekend. Yeah, this, this one, like you said, Mike, this is kind of becoming a right of fall here in the, in the Cincinnati area. You know, Coleraine uh, coach Tom Bolden was te uh, teasing Steve Speck uh, earlier in the week that their fates are kind of intertwined. It's kind of like Woody, uh, Woody Hayes and Bo Schembechler <laughs> back during their rivalry days. But like you said, X is 4-1 in playoff games, even though even though Coleraine has that win. It's definitely going to be an exciting one. I personally didn't have X even make in the playoffs, so to, to find out this is the first week match, it's just been everyone in the city's uh, been real uh, geared up for it. Yeah, and, and Coleraine has been rolling. It's a, even though it's a 1-8 matchup, I think you throw out the seeds because you know how tight this one's going to be played. Absolutely, you have to. Uh, you know, Coleraine's going to rely on, their, on their, their triple option running game led by Alfred Ramsey. He's passed for over 1,200 yards. He's run for uh, more than 1,100 yards. He has 28 touchdowns on the season. But St. X, led by quarterback Nick Tensing, he's thrown for more than 1,900 yards, has 17 touchdown passes. And kind of an X factor in this game, X has a Trey Kilgore back. He's a, he's a wide receiver, running back, athlete kind of kid, can kind of do it all. And, he, you know, it's his um, – him not being there in, in week three should not be overlooked. He could, he's a game breaker type of player. Yeah, don't sleep on Steve Speck in the playoffs. That's for sure. From there, let's talk about another 1 8 matchup. The number one team in the state in Division Two is Turpin, and they're going into a Region 8 game against the Red Devils of Tippin Canoe. Turpin's seventh straight appearance in the playoffs for the Red Devils. It's their eighth in a row, but it's a tough first round matchup for the Red Devils. It, Turpin's, a, Turpin's a team with a lot of pride. These this group of kids would, uh, during the regular season, would wake up at 4.30 and be on the practice field by 5. Uh, they're very committed to what they're doing there at Turpin High School, and I like the chance of a lot. They actually went up to Tip City last year and got the road win in the first round. This year, Tip City comes down to their place, and I think Turpin's just going to roll because they're even better than they were last year. Connor Danson, their quarterback, I talked about him being kind of like a fantasy football type player. He's thrown for more than 1,300 yards, thrown, rushed for more than 700 yards, 29 total touchdowns. He's just a difference maker. I don't see Tip City uh, stopping him. 
Finally, let's go to Division One, Region Four before I let you go. Uh, Moeller, their sixth straight appearance in the playoff. The Crusaders, who uh, went deep last year, they're nine and four last year. They were beaten by X in week number 13. They come up against a Wayne team who I think maybe a lot of people are surprised struggled like they did throughout the season, but got themselves in the playoffs. They're sitting there at number six, and they've made the playoffs for the last five years, but I think people are interested to know which Warriors team shows up to this matchup against Moeller. You know, I know Wayne's got a nice quarterback led by uh, Javon Harrison. I think he's going to UC, 1,600 total yards this year. I just think he's going to have trouble against him. Moeller just has too, too many weapons, Mike. If you look at their defensive stats, not going to be too impressed, but you've got to consider who Moeller's played this year. You know, they're going to give up a lot of yards. They're going to give up a lot of points because they're playing kids for going to D1 schools. But they do have playmakers like linebacker Shane Jones on that defensive unit who are more than capable of making plays when it counts. And when it comes down to it, I think Mowers has got too many weapons compared to Wayne. Well, Duke, good stuff as always. Look forward to talking to you next week. Set your DVR for your demons tonight here on Sports Time Ohio. I got it set. Go Westlake, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Duke. Nick the Dukovich from the Cincinnati Inquirer getting it set for the games down in the natty. From there, we head over to the Dayton area. Always loaded up with some good games. This one focusing on the Owls Nest tonight, 730. Trotwood Madison, which has won their last seven games after a week three loss, go up against the Fighting Owls of Mount Healthy, making their third appearance in the last four years. And they just have a brutal defense. It's allowed less than a touchdown game after missing the playoffs last year. Sports Director Jack Pohl from WDTN, as always, joins us to talk some Dayton football. Hello, Mr. Pohl. How are you? I'm doing very good. And boy, you guys hit it square on the head about the importance of this game with Trotwood's offense, which has not been as explosive as anyone thought it would be. Now, last week, they closed out the season, you know, continuing that winning streak, continuing uh, to build momentum. I mean, it was a it was a nasty night last week. I mean, torrential downpour. They didn't score a lot of points against a uh, better-than-advertised Butler team. But Trotwood did win the, the GWAC North, and they do head into the playoffs as defending state champions. The question is, how many points can they put up on the board tonight against Mount Healthy? And Aston Jackson had a nice game last week. There's still major concerns at the quarterback position. But if Trotwood's going to get this victory tonight on the road, uh, it, they're going to need to just grind the ball out. This is not a team that's going to throw it all over the field. Um, and it's going to be interesting because they're facing maybe one of the best defenses that they've played all year. Not, uh, the Aviators defense is pretty good last week, too. So that might have been a good precursor heading into this one. Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting. Trotwood's in, and they could cause a lot of problems as they go up against the Fighting Owls. From there, how about a 4-5 matchup in Division 5, Region 20, in a battle of unbeatens? I like this one. Dayton Christian going up against West Liberty Salem in a pair of 10-0 squads. <laughs> this is a great game. You know, Dayton Christian has had a magical uh, see. You know, this is a, a school that didn't even have a program that long ago, and many of the seniors on this year's team started this program, went through Pee Wees. They're the first four-year guys to go through the program, and they have built it. They were the first team, the senior class at Dayton Christian was the first team to get a winning record, the first team to go undefeated, and now the first team to make a playoff appearance. And they have Heath Harding, who is – Every time he touches the ball, he can score every single time. And what's overlooked, Heath Harding is just a dynamic runner, and he's, he, he can catch the football. He's also a tremendous defensive back and obviously a great kick returner as well. Heath Harding, if, if, uh, if West Liberty Salem's going to win this game at home tonight, they stop Heath Harding, I think they win easily. Um, and you probably could say that about every day Christian <laughs> game this year, but, but it's the truth. And I think that uh, West Liberty Salem has the defense that they can do that. You know, Toby Smith led his team to a 10 and 0 record. He has a senior class that has won 40 games in their career. So they've done some great things up there as well. DC had a pretty soft schedule this year. Now it's time to get tested. I believe they have the talent to, to, to go far in the playoffs. If they can keep Heath Harding, uh, just give him a few creases here and there. Dayton Christian's that team that's a little bit of a lower seed, but like Trotwood, the seed doesn't mean anything. Now that they're in the playoffs, they can do some real damage, but it'll be tough to win tonight on the road. Real quick before I let you go, Minster and Tri-County North, 2-7 matchup in 624. Do the Wildcats move on in the next round? Yeah, well, Minster's clearly the, uh, it, it, on paper, the more talented team in this one, but you know what? I mean, props to Tri-County North. Second straight appearance into the playoffs. Uh, 
it's a tough road game for them, but uh, I think this might be one of those opening round games where uh, Minster should win this game easily. All due respect to Tri-County North. Well, enjoy the dry weather for a change. We look forward to talking to you again <laughs> next week. All right, we'll talk to you then, guys. <laughs> Jack Pohl, the sports director from WDTN in Dayton. Much more to come here in the fastest 90 minutes. On the high school football circus, we continue to crisscross the state, get you set up for week 11, the first week of the playoffs and the first time for John Hay. Ashley Collins paid the Cleveland City School a visit. She's got the story coming up next.